is the Garden of Eden in Florida? And is Florida part of what's left of the city of Atlantis? Hi, I'm Stacy, and thanks for joining me on Sacred Enzyme. I've been studying a lot on this Greek stuff and I have more here. And so today I wanna to share my adventures that I had when I went down to Avon Park and um, Sebring, Florida today. And so Avon Park, the interesting thing is, is that I've been reading two books, Edgar Cayce's readings, and he talks a lot about this uh, person named Amelius, and then the Urantia, which is called the Book of Truth. And in Urantia, it talks about these people uh, being called Avonals, and their uh, Michael the Archangel is apparently the father of Adam and Eve, and he's he also um, had these group of people. They were called the Avonals, the Dionals, and I think that the Dionals they're referring to like Dionysus because it's spelled pretty uh, similar. But anyway, it was a um, it was a function or a job, the Avonals. Okay, well we have Avon Park. Avon Park and we have Avon by the Sea. And uh, I don't know where they got the name Avon Park because in this book that I've been reading, the Florida Place Names, it doesn't really tell you how they got the name for um, Avon Park. It just says that they came from someplace called Stratford-on-Avon, and so they decided to name it that. But I don't know. So it says that Avon C got it from the Bard of Avon. But the other thing is, is that there's a place in Florida called A. Urantia. A. Urantia. Like Urantia the book of truth. It's an unincorporated town and <laughs> it's on the coast and it's not far from St. Augustine. And guess what? It was taken over by the EPA. <laughs> there was a railroad station that went through there and in its unincorporated city. I thought, well, isn't that interesting? And it was a cultivation station in 1882. The name is plural of the botanical destination for a fruit of the orange species, Urantia. So Hesperides is a, is a state road that goes all the way across the state of Florida. It connects one side to the other. Well, later they changed that to State Road 60 Highway 60, but that's Hesperides. Hesperides is also the name of the place in Greek mythology that has the, the nymphs that guard the orchard of the golden apples, the oranges, basically. Florida was a great big farm. It, they grew the golden apples. Hercules came and tried to steal the golden apples. And he had to fight Lydon and he cut Lydon, killed him. Well, you know, there's a fossilized serpent head in Washington Oaks Garden in the middle of one of these little areas of water. It's mounted right on there. I put it on my shorts. You can clearly see that that's a fossilized snake head. <laughs> you see the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. It's there, it's there. It looks just like the character in the Greek myth. Well, we also have Avalon Beach. So there's something that has to do with Avon and these Avonals and Michael the Archangel. Okay, well, they had several gardens of Eden and the first Garden of Eden failed after a hundred years and they moved it to Mesopotamia. They came and gave humanity an upgrade 38,000 years ago, according to the Urantia, which I find is interesting that there was a city with an A in front of it, A Urantia, that's been taken over by the EPA. 
I mean, what in the world is going on, folks? So anyway, about 600, uh, mid to late 600, the Muslim conquest came through. And all of these people that were settled in the Mediterranean, they got out and they left. But those 38,000 years of trading and developing and technological advances were all taking place around the Mediterranean Sea. And they all ended up in Iberia. And all of these Iberian people, the Greeks, Phoenicians, the Tartessas, yes, Tartaria. Tartaria was in southern Spain. They just found it. They just found it. The Celt Iberians, because the Celts were there so long that they'd mesh with the Iberian people, so they called them Celt Iberians. The Spanish and the Moors, the Basque and the Visigoths. We had all of these people. And the Phoenicians, they had already sailed the whole world, mapped it out. So they were probably already here. So other evidence that I have that I feel like that uh, Atlantis is, uh, is um, here in Florida is the Hesperides. Uh, that there's a meteor that hit the Gulf of Mexico 65,000 years ago. But before that, you know, uh, you can see that this area in the Gulf would be a wonderful duplicate of the Mediterranean area for these people to come to. And if you also look in states like Alabama, right, and Louisiana, you'll also see some interesting things. You know, there's an Iberia in Louisiana and if you go look at the architecture, it looks just like it does in Iberia. I mean, we had such an influence of different cultures that it created an amalgamation of architecture here. So when you're looking at stuff you see in Spanish stuff, you're seeing Roman stuff, you're seeing all these other influences, you're seeing Greek stuff, but it's because they were all there for so long that they all blended. And then they came here. Now, I think that they were here between six and 700. And the reason that I feel that way is because um, if you look at some of the founding fathers' houses, if you look at Stratford, um, Stratford Hall, I think it's what it's called, Stratford Place. It's a home that Robert E. Lee was born in, Stratford Hall. There's a, there is a hearth that's on the second floor that has two angels on it, and it has a J and a 749, and it's the Julian calendar, and that's the date. That's the date that was put in that house, was built in 749. And they try to say that it was born in, built in the 1740s because they're trying to make you think that that J is a one, but it's not, it's not. And so I think that the Gulf of Mexico would have actually been a perfect replica for the Mediterranean Sea. And if you look at cities that are in Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, tons of Greek names. Almost every beach in Florida is named after a Greek god. There are cities all over the place named after Greek gods, Greek myths, Greek cities, uh, cities in Anatolia, cities in Spain. I mean, cities in Rome. It's, it's all here. It's all here. It's all here. Where I live used to be called El Dorado. And it became a mobster's paradise, or they tried to make it the mobster's paradise, which is a video for another day. But I am going to talk about this place out here that I live, because there's a lot of secrets out here, and it's really interesting. It talks about, we'll talk about how the mob made it to Florida in the 50s. So maybe they had a hand in how all these old world buildings ended up burning down in the 50s. You know, it was just a wave of arson that just swept through Florida in the 50s, which is pretty interesting. That, that was when the mob was here too. <laughs> so the other thing is, is St. Augustine. St. Augustine, Florida, I think St. Augustine is named after Augustine Hup uh, Hippo. And he was a Berber. And he was born in 354. He died in 430. And he was a, he was a philosopher. He taught the Mancinian faith, the Hellenistic philosophy, and Neoplatism. So Augustine is what, what they named St. Augustine after. <laughs> and St. Augustine is supposed to be the first city in America. It probably really was, right? Because it was built by the people from Iberia. And that these were like the kids, children of Atlantis. They were here in Florida. They were here. They were here. 
And the other thing is, is that I've been reading DeSoto's travels through Florida. I was reading Hernando DeSoto and I was following his path up through Florida and I was reading where he landed and where he went. And you know that DeSoto said that there were groves here everywhere. So there were already orange groves here before, this, before DeSoto ever got here. But really the interesting thing is, is if DeSoto and all of these explorers came from Spain, they already knew all these people were here because these people ran out of their country in the 600s. So what were they coming here looking for? They were looking for precious things here, I can tell you that. There's all kind of lakes in Florida. There's like 30 lakes in Florida. They're called Crystal Lake or Silver Lake. There's all kind of minerals here. There's all kind of gemstones and minerals and silver and crystal. And even there's a town in Central Florida called Lithia. And Lithia in Greek means rock. Well, guess who has set up shop and has been in Lithia mining the crap out of it for a long time? Well, you can look and figure that one out. But they start with an M and they're one of the biggest companies in the whole world. And they've been mining the hell out of Florida for a long time. They've been mining phosphate over here, two miles from where the meteor that hit 65,000 years ago, a piece of it landed two miles from where they've been digging up the ground in Lake Wells. They started digging that up probably before I was born. And I'm 53, they closed the sand mines down because they had to take phosphate out of cleaning products because they were poisoning people, remember? That big thing, well, you probably don't if you're not old enough. But a long time ago, they used to put phosphorus in like laundry soap and dish detergent and all kinds of stuff like that. And they didn't realize that it was making people sick. You can't have too much phosphorus, just like you can't have too much phosphorus now. And if you have a lot of phosphorus in your diet now, it's gonna make you sick. And if you're one of these families that comes from this area, you better not be eating too much phosphorus anyway because you will die early. You will die early. It will kill you early because your cysteine and your um, promelanin has been altered on chromosome number two. You can go and get your genetic testing done. You'll find that you come from the Iberian Peninsula or you come out of Southeast Asia. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have enzyme problems. You're going to have a long history of early deaths in your family too. Yes, indeed. So we have the, the, the myth of Hesperides. And then in Lake Wales, where I live, we also have a story about Hes, uh, these people that had some orange groves that were family owned. They were two miles from where that meteor hit. And they were building Bach Tower Gardens there. And uh, Bach Tower Gardens was next. The, the girl liked to go out there and listen to the bells. She liked to listen to the singing and uh, she helped pick the fruit and a lot of fruit was going missing. And so come to find out they had captured a 12 inch man in a trap, a foreign, a, a foreign language speaking, little bearded naked man that was like foot tall. They accidentally caught him twice. They let him go the first time. They caught him again. They didn't know what to do. They called the police. The police came and got him. They, the police took the little man in an orange crate back to the station that night their house was pelted by rocks and they looked outside and there were bunches and bunches of these little things out, these little creatures out there. They were like little mini human beings, almost like uh, a homunculus, right? Or a Lilliputian or a gnome. They call them the gnomes of Central Florida. That There were gnomes here. And so, you know, gnomes are notorious for being around nymphs like Hesperides. I know it seems hard to believe that Greek mythology possibly could be true, but if you, if you start reading the Urantia books, the Book of Truth, you'll understand it all. I mean, it puts it all in perspective, all in perspective. But uh, St. Augustine, he was, he was born in 354. A lot of these houses have architecture that looks just like what comes from Iberia. And all of the people that were here, I mean, if they, if St. Augustine was the first city in the United States, and it's named after Augustus Hippo, and he was a fan of Hellenistic philosophy and, and Mycenaean faith, okay, what kind of culture do you think was here? <laughs> right, Hellenistic, Hellenistic. 
it was all myths. It was all the myths. It was the maidens. It was the nymphs. It was the oracles. It was the gods. It was all of that. And so when I went down to um, Avon Park, I couldn't believe this is the stuff that I seen down there. So then I left there and I went down to Sebring. And so in Sebring, let me just tell you what it says about Sebring, because that really got me. So it says Sebring was set was in 1912. This town was founded and named for George Eugene Sebring, a pottery manufacturer of Sebring, Ohio. Family members laugh at the legend that he intentionally patterned the city plan after that of Heliopolis, Heliopolis, the ancient Syrian city with its temple of the sun at the center and the streets radiating. And it was also the county seat of Highlands County. Okay, well, I can tell you. Oh, yeah, and this is a card I picked up from the shop that I stopped there. Tell me that they don't think that there's not something going on in Sebring. The Lost Mines of Atlantis. You can rock, you can mine rock there. I stopped in there and, you know, they just, it was family owned. And they don't, they bought it from somebody else. So she didn't know any of the history on it. I said, you don't know why, of all names, that they would pick that, you know? Wonder why they would pick that. So, and you know, we have some cities in Florida that are that are named after Hellenistic. Like we got St. Helens, we got Lake Helen, uh, we got Monroe, uh, we've got just all kind of cities. And just pretty much every single place that is a beach is named after something Spanish or something Greek. Something Spanish, something Greek. So down in Sebring, all of the streets are the streets are all those roundabouts. The very center of the street, they call the circle. And they had the same thing in Avon Park, too. They have the circle down there. And then there's this old place called the Jacaranda. And the Jacaranda was a hotel. And it's got a, it's got a basement, but they wouldn't let me go in it. They wouldn't let me go in it. <laughs> I asked, and the lady there, she, she wasn't that friendly. She was definitely not open to any types of suggestions that the Jacaranda could possibly be older than what she was telling me from 1923. They, the Jacaranda, they thought, they say that it, <laughs> that it was built in three years. You go look at the Jacaranda in Avon Park and tell me that they built this in 1923 and look at the population that was in Avon Park in 1923, there was probably 200 people in the whole town. I'm not joking. It used to be a fort here. There's still military base there. They're always bombing out here. They drop bombs and test, do test runs and everything out here. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said about Florida. So yeah, the, uh, the Jacaranda must be like some highfalutin place, but I mean, it was pretty and it had a lot of relics in it, but you know, I'm glad that they kept it. They kept it. But they say the hotel's named for a 150-year-old jacaranda tree that they cut down to make room for the building. So they came in and supposedly cut down a 150-year-old jacaranda tree, which is terrible because jacarandas are really old trees. And, you know, down in Sebring, they have the Kenilworth Lodge. And you got to look at that, man that has like eight bell towers on it. And it's right on the water, which I think is interesting because I'm thinking, why in the hell would you need a building that had that many towers on it? There's no bells or there's no bells in the towers, but there's like eight of them. And then the Kenilworth Lodge literally takes up two street blocks, city blocks. It's no joke. The thing is enormous. And I'm sure if you went back and looked at the amount of people that were living in Sebring when the Kenilworth Lodge was built, you would look at it and think, why would you need a hotel? Why would you need lodging this big? <laughs> There's, why would you need that? There's nobody to even stay there. And then there's some other videos of this one building that's being renovated. It looks like it has a grain silo built on the, on the side. It looks like an all-in-one place, but you know, this is out towards um, Hickory Hammock in Sebring. 
which is a big forest out there and uh, a nature preserve because people live out there. There's just probably a few hundred homes out there. But I'll tell you what, it takes you about an hour ride to get out there. But it's beautiful, beautiful, but it's really old. Really, really old. There's a lot of hammocks in Florida. A lot of tree hammocks. There's something to be said about Sebring. There's something to be said about Avon Park. There's something to be said about these Avenals and that we have so much architecture that's in Florida that looks like Iberia. I can show you in this book that I've been reading about Iberia that they absolutely love these tan colored bricks like you see all over Florida. They loved columns and towers. And I mean, look at these, look at this illustration of this building right here. Tell me that that doesn't look like a lot of buildings you see now. Go look at my shorts and tell me that this doesn't look like what's out at St. Anne Shrine. What's out in Sebring that they turned into the fire department, the Kenilworth Lodge. I'll show you that one. It's like these towers that they show. They got the bells in it. Oh, here we got one with a princess in it. See, princess in that tower. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, it looks like, I don't know. These are some red, this is a red haired princess, which is interesting because you know, they always show these blonde and red haired people. And then look at these angels. This is interesting, look at this. This goes to show you, Iberia had everybody all colors of the spectrum see racism is a myth racism is a hoax it's a hoax it was designed to make people hate each other they don't want people to talk because if people talk they figure shit out I'll show you the rest of this stuff man it's unbelievable so much similarities columns look at the top there's so much of the style of column. And you know, that's the most difficult column to do because I was reading about the Ionic Order. Look at this tower. Come on already. Iberian is Florida. It is freaking Florida. Every city hall, every city hall is bricks like this. Every city hall. I wish I could find a book that had more Iberian art or uh, more Iberian architecture in it. Oh, and, and you know, let's not forget about this ancient statue that they found in Iberia. This is an Iberian princess or queen. And this statue is so old. Iberia is very old. This statue, they called her the Lady... Uh, the Lady of Granada, as I think is what they call it. The Lady of Granada. Well, anyway, you had the you had the Berbers there, you know? I mean, you had you had all these people. You had all of these people that were you had people out of Africa that were in the Iberian Peninsula. You had all kinds of culture. And they all came here. They came here in antiquity. They were definitely here by year 700. They were here by 700. When the Muslim conquest came in, they left. And, and you know, all of these explorers, they knew these people had come here. And they were looking for everything, you know? And they also mined salt, too. They did a lot of salt mining. And they used raw salt to make electricity. And, you know, if you get raw salt wet, you can explode the shit out of something. For real. So what do you think? I think we should keep digging. I'm gonna start keep going to all these cities, all these cities in this Florida place name book. And we're gonna find out when Iberia was here in Florida, in Alabama, in Louisiana, and Georgia too, in Georgia too. They were all around here, all up the coast. They were here, they were here. Virginia, there's proof 700, the Julian calendar. 
there's Roman numerals and letters and most of the old courthouses that they haven't torn down. And if you look in Jefferson County and Polk County, and there's one out, I think it's Leon County or Dade City, Dade City. Those are three identical courthouses. They all have aluminum, metal roofs, shiny, beautiful bells in the tops, and they still have the clocks. And they all have basements. Everything has basements. All these old structures, they have basements. They got flooded here. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you is I've been in this book that I've been reading, this Florida Place Names, they said the ancient maps actually showed that there is an e there was an east and a west Florida. And that people say that Florida is many Floridas. Many Floridas. So what do you think about that? What do you think about that? I mean, we've got, you know, when I was down there doing, uh, when I was doing the video that is on my shorts, it shows a pink building that's being, uh, that's closed off to the public, that's being redone by Roman architects. It says Roman architects. And uh, there's a Spanish building that's right next to it. That street, the next block says Sparta, is Sparta. Sparta Drive or Sparta Road. I mean, their streets are named all over the place, Greek names. And the beaches, and the cities, after gods, the roads, after gods, after nymphs. The state was the golden apple. St. Augustine, that's an ancient orchard. I'm growing seven orange trees from an orange that I got in that ancient forest in Washington Oaks Park in St. Augustine or Washington Oaks Gardens in St. Augustine. And there's also a fossilized Naga head. I know it seems hard to believe, but there are fossilized animals here of large proportions. And there's a fossilized Naga head in the middle of Washington Oaks Gardens. And I have it, uh, it's my first video I ever uploaded onto my shorts. And it is tying right back in to the myth of Hesperides, that those nymphs were guarded, the garden of the uh, golden apples that Zeus broke into and killed Lygdon was, was guarded by, the, by a snake serpent, a large serpent, it depicts it in the art. And if you go and look, you'll see it, you'll see it, you'll see it, it's there, it's there. So yeah, the St. Saint, the Saint Augustine is the oldest city after Augustus Hippo, 354 to 430. I think they were here in the 700s. I think that Iberia is Atlantis. And they could have come anywhere from the 30,000 up until. But you know, there's a lot of old places that have been destroyed. And you should watch my video on old world demolitions because this is how all these things got taken apart. They sold all of the world's fairs to construction deconstruction companies. And then they printed catalogs and sold everything from them. They took everything apart, saved the nails, saved the bricks, saved the plaster, saved everything. And so if, if they went to that great detail, I mean, look at mar lago you had the Post family. They bought one of these deconstructed old world structures. They paid a wrecking company. Wrecking companies would bid and buy these places and then they'd print the catalog. The St. Louis World Fair had $50 million worth of inventory in it, which today equals $217 billion. So, I mean, I'll tell you what, they were just making hand over fist. And so, yeah, that's how Mar Largo, Mar Largo is either an old world structure, but if it was built, it was built from old world structure material. And all of the insides is clearly taken from another place. There's no way that we had anybody that did that work. That's all piecemeal from somewhere else. And Mar Largo is Greek. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, it's a bay. It's a bay. You know, Iberia even had its own Greek port. And the Phoenicians 
they'd been through there a long time ago. They blended with the they blended with the whole place. I mean, it shows here in this book that I'm reading about Iberia. It says that the I the Iberians were prehistoric, and then it says an an early historic period is when the Celts came in and they blended with the Iberians, so they became Celtiberians. And then it says 192 BC, the Romans came along. 8411, Germans, we got a lot of Germans here and a lot of kids on those orphan trains too. A lot of those kids were German. Then we have the Visigoths in 453 and then 712, we got the Muslims. So everybody was out by then because they couldn't practice their religion. So, I mean, so, but, you know, Tartessa, Tartessos was Iberian and Celt-Iberian, Celt-Iberian. So Tartaria is Iberia and Iberia is Atlantis and Atlantis was in Florida and Georgia and Alabama and Louisiana. And I intend to prove it. So I went on 31 minutes. I would love to hear what you have to say. And I would love to hear if you have read any of these things. Have you read the uh, Arantia? Have you read uh, any of Edgar Casey stuff? Have you read any of, this, of any of these books about these Florida explorers? Are you even interested in this kind of stuff? Because I think it's fascinating that so many things can be traced back to Greece. And that that's where the Garden of Eden was first at was right off the island of crete and then it became the land of nod the experiment failed after 100 years they rebooted the experiment in mesopotamia and then they left 30,000 years and they went into india they went into greece and they went into europe and they ended up here so I thank you for spending 32 minutes. I know it was long, but please, you have got to go look at my shorts. I put them on for shorts so they'd only take you a second and look at those places that I seen today. The old fire department in downtown Sebring, they told me this is how these guys were great. They were so kind. They said that they built that place and that they built that big tower so they can hang their hoses to dry. I said, so you guys built a tower, a bell tower on a fire station to hang hoses. So you'd have to go all the way up there to hang hose. Why wouldn't you just come up and build something to hang hoses on? That makes no sense to me that you'd have to climb up basically up into a nest. Well, guess what? You can't look at it anymore and they've completely gutted the thing, but the outside does not lie. And I did, I took a picture of the front, but I have to figure out how to load all these pictures that I took still pictures of, of the architecture, because the front of it has all Iberian architectural symbols on it. it have like the heart, the harp, the leaves, all that is Iberian. The columns are all over Sebring and Avon Park. They have a pan building. They have tons of pan buildings in Iberia. That's their jam. That's where you get those cheese wedge-shaped buildings. That one is Sebring, right downtown. I mean, they got a ton of old stuff down there in Sebring. Blew me away. I don't know what was going on down there, but something was a long time ago. I think that the Ivanals were there. I think they were in, in uh, Highlands County for sure. And there are a bunch of places that are out into the wooded area. There's a little place called uh, DeSoto, Town DeSoto. And uh, if you blink, you'll miss it. But right in that area there, there are uh, some old towns out there that are named after Celt people. And they're named after these Celtish uh, Iberians, the Celt Iberians, because they came here. They were these Highland people and they farmed. They were farmers. They were the farmers of the group. All these people were skilled. They were artisans. They were uh, crafts. They were craftsmen, they were herbalists, they were uh, physicians, herbalists, they were medicine people, they were builders, they were mathematicians. I mean, they were clergy. They knew how to do everything. They understood 
like how the entire universe worked because they'd been around forever. They were technologically advanced. And so we have gotten technologically stupid over time. And we're just now getting our some of this knowledge back. But I, yeah, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Please go watch the shorts. And uh, I hope to catch you on the next one. I'm going to go into this book of Urantia more uh, some of the stuff that I uh, learned about last night. Pretty interesting. So with that, I thank you for 35 minutes. And I hope you had a wonderful day. And I hope that all of us can keep our eyes open. And we can start seeing more of this stuff. And we can really figure out, was Atlantis here? And how do we prove it? It was definitely old Iberia here. There's no doubt about it. So thanks for watching Sacred Enzyme. And when you come looking for me, I'll be here. We're living in the past, present, future, all at the same time. Have a wonderful evening. And thanks. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.